What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Now that the NBA draft is over, I want to take a look at the most surprising moments of the night. There were some head scratchers and some shockers, but to me, these are the biggest surprises of the NBA draft. Starting at 5, I have the Cavs selection of Darius Garland for the 5th overall pick. This was somewhat of a surprise since they already have a nice young point guard in Colin Sexton, and there was word that the Cavs were trying to do something like the Blazers with uh, Dame and CJ with an undersized backcourt. And I'm not sure how that's going to work out for them, but I guess we'll see how it pans out in the future. I don't watch college basketball all that much, but I didn't really see Garland play. I heard he barely only played only like five games or so, so I'm not sure how good he is or not. I heard he was a good shooter, so maybe he'll be the Lillard in this situation. I know Sexton was really good last year, so I think they have potential to be a pretty good backcourt if they stay together long enough, but I'm not sure how the Cavs are going to develop them, but I think as long as it works out how it should for the most part, they have a really bright future ahead of them. The only problem I'd see is them being an undersized backcourt since they're both only around 6'2". They'll be a defensive liability most of the time when they're on the court, kind of like Dame and CJ, but... If they're good enough offensively, I don't think it'll be a problem that much for the Cavs. At fourth, I have the Phoenix Suns. I have no idea what the Suns were trying to do in this draft. They've needed a point guard for quite some time now, and a lot of us thought that they were going to take like Kobe White or someone, but then they traded the pick to Minnesota for Dario Saric and the 11th pick. I know Suns fans are pretty frustrated with what happened, and rightfully so, because this organization has no clue what they're doing. I think they were trying to make cap space for D'Angelo Russell and try and get him on a max deal because he and Booker are really close, but I don't think that's the best solution right now. I think just like at least make good decisions, like you can't bank on D'Angelo Russell joining the team. I don't really know where they go from here. Cam Johnson was expected to be taken around 20 to 23, and they took him at 11th. Now I heard he is the best shooter in this draft, but Booker seriously needs someone in the backcourt with him. Unfortunately, Suns fans, the Suns are probably in for yet another tanking lottery season next year. I feel like if things don't change with Phoenix, Booker could demand a trade and get out of there. We've seen it all the time, and a lot of star players, when they're in bad situations, are starting to just want to get out. And it makes sense, especially with Phoenix. At third, a big surprise were all the trades that went on throughout the night. There were an immense amount of trades that happened all throughout the night, which were quite surprising to see. In my opinion, the Pelicans just dominated this draft as soon as they got the number 4 pick. They managed to get a bunch of future picks while still ending up with a lot of solid pieces. It felt like almost every pick was traded to a different team, which kind of resulted in that hat problem where a bunch of guys were wearing hats for teams that weren't even taking them. Like, DeAndre Hunter isn't posted on any of the social media accounts because the Lakers don't really, they traded the picks, so they don't really have him, and then the Hawks can't get him yet because the trade hasn't been finalized, so he's kind of just in limbo right now. I counted about 25 trades between the first and second rounds, which is pretty insane. A lot of teams got some nice steals through the trades, while a few other teams kind of got burned. Maybe Phoenix might be one of those teams, not sure yet. I think most of the trades were beneficial, but we'll see what happens when these guys actually play in the NBA. The second most surprising moment for me was actually the emotion of this draft. It was pretty surprising for me to see so many players have parents who've passed away, especially at such a young age. Almost every player was near tears or straight up crying. ESPN tried a little too much with the continued questions about what does your mother or what does your father mean to you and all that, and it kind of just felt not necessary. Like they should just celebrate the players instead of asking them about the emotional side of things. This was definitely one of the more emotional draft classes I've ever seen, and I genuinely felt bad for some of the prospects that got overlooked in this draft. Speaking of which, the biggest surprise of this draft in my eyes were all the draft steals. The most surprising moment for me were all the steals that a bunch of teams passed on. Nasir Little got overlooked like crazy after he had such a bad season with UNC, and you could tell that he was bothered by how far he fell. If he's used the right way with Portland, I can definitely see him becoming a solid wing for the Blazers in a few years. Another player I think became a steal was Kevin Porter Jr. for the Cavs. He played well in college, but he fell largely due to concerns of attitude problems, and he got a suspension by USC for personal conduct issues. 
Assuming he gets his personal stuff in check, I could definitely see him becoming a good pickup for the Cavs. Calvin Johnson was another player that seemed to have fallen further than expected, but he landed with the Spurs, so expect Pop to turn him into a future Hall of Famer somehow. And then of course, there's Bull Bull. Shout out to Twitter for all the love to Bull Bull. A green room invitee that nearly went undrafted, Bull Bull falling all the way to 44 was a massive surprise and in my opinion, the biggest shock of this draft. Bull Bull was expected to be a lottery pick at the very least, maybe even a top 10 pick. The fact that he fell that far just because of injuries shows how valued health is in this league now. He's incredibly thin, and at 7'2", it's going to be tough for him to stay healthy, but if he does stay healthy, he's going to be the biggest steal in a long time. Luckily for him, he landed with the Nuggets, which have pretty good health management with guys like Isaiah Thomas and Michael Porter Jr. Well, that's all for this one. What do you guys think were the biggest surprise to in the draft this year, and who do you think has the brightest future in this league? Thanks for the support, and I'll catch you in the next one. Just in case the party gets rowdy, I brought my crew. I don't mind if y'all wanna fight me, just don't shoot.